Lexus brand has gone from struggling for acceptance in the premium car category to becoming an acknowledged and fully-fledged member of the luxury car clan. Now the GS fits in nicely between the IS mass market model and the LS top end flagship and this latest version provides a more assertive, a more progressive look combined with refined technology. Big question though is, how will it shape up against its European rivals? The answer depends in the first instance on brand perception. While there's no doubt that Lexus is a premium brand, it lacks the history and the heritage of a Mercedes-Benz or a Jaguar, for instance. Not that tradition is everybody's cup of Darjeeling tea. For others, it's the motoring experience that matters most, the ability of the car to involve and enchant. The new GS range certainly places a stronger emphasis on dynamic capability with both grip and gusto in abundance. Top-end brands are also expected to excel in the quality and technology stakes, aspects convincingly addressed here by the fastidious attention to fit and finish and by the sophistication under that skin. But nothing sways opinion more than styling and the presence of a car. I'll be the first to admit that styling is very much a matter of personal preference, but I'm sure that most people agree that this car has a much more assertive shape than its rather dumpy predecessor. The lines are both more streamlined and more aggressive, and the result is a car that has a much more aggressive personality. Part of the reason are the sharper, cleaner, more contemporary lines that boldly express a more self-assured identity. The sheet metal seems tautly stretched over a rigidly constructed frame, while the short front overhang and muscular haunches signal both agility and power. Those big alloy rims are clad with low-profile, fat footprint performance rubber, while the steeply raked windscreen, smoothly sloped rear and short high deck suggest wind cheating efficiency. Full color coding, a body kit with hungry apertures and a deep rear apron hosting large exhaust surrounds complete a look that's both smart and upmarket. Despite exterior dimensions which are very similar to the previous model, the interior of the GS350 has grown quite substantially. It feels a lot bigger and the measurements tell you that there's more headroom and legroom both front and rear. Also the ergonomics much more intuitive than before and part of the reason is this massive display in the center console. That display provides the core source of vehicle information and system control, nothing unusual in luxury car terms. But what is unusual is the mouse type pointing device provided to select on-screen options or to scroll through electronic menus. Its sensitive action takes some getting used to though. Equally surprising is how comprehensive the standard specification is, while many premium brands will provide no more than basic amenities for list price purchases. The tactile experience is unequivocally upmarket. The new Lexus GS range comes with a choice of three drivetrains. At the entry level, there's a 2.5 litre V6. Then there's this engine, a 3.5 litre V6, and you also get a 3.5 litre V6 with a hybrid drivetrain, which adds obviously an electric motor and a battery pack to the equation. But this normal 3.5 litre V6 petrol is credited with 233 kilowatts of maximum power, together with 378 newton meters of torque, and the gearbox is a six speed automatic. The V6 is lusty and eager, first growling and then roaring its appreciation when exercised with enthusiasm. Twin cams per cylinder bank, sophisticated fuel injection and variable valve timing all contribute to impressive response when you floor the loud pedal. Traction is good off the mark and acceleration insistent, allowing a frisky 0 to 100 km an hour sprint time of 6.3 seconds, not half bad for a large and heavy car. Top speed is limited to 235 km an hour, which will be of academic interest to most. In-gear response is admirable and in sport mode the shift paddles allow full manual override with gear changes that are snappy enough to keep driving enthusiasts smiling. For a big luxurious D-segment car, the GS actually feels very together, very agile. We've been driving some very bumpy, quite undulating roads, and there's a cohesiveness about this car that I don't remember from the previous GS. Also, a lot of good power, nice response. I would have liked a bit more feedback on the steering wheel, but generally, this is a lot of fun to drive. The Lexus displays impeccable road manners, retaining a neutral stance even when pressing on and never showing any tendency towards sudden oversteer or frustrating understeer. Instead, it toes the chosen line with tenacity. For a luxury car, the chassis feedback is reassuringly unambiguous, making it easy to explore the car's limits. The combination of a double wishbone front suspension and a multi-link rear allows ample damping and good comfort levels without turning the car into a marshmallow machine. Straight line stability is good and noise levels are well contained, making the GS350 an effortless long distance runner. 
That said, there's enough athletic intent in the way the big sedan rides the bumps and dips of a country road with reassuring glee and in the joyous roar emanating from those twin exhausts when you give it stick to keep more enterprising drivers entertained. The Lexus GS350 faces some tough competition from the likes of the Mercedes-Benz E350, the BMW 530i and the Audi A6 3.0-litre TFSI. But in this segment, it's not just about performance and features, but also about exclusivity and having something a little bit different. The GS350 in its current form certainly presents a very attractive and very different alternative to its normal European rivals. The generous urge and shove of a 3.5-litre V6 is at the heart of this very entertaining, composed and comfortable Executive Express. Add chiselled, distinctive styling and a full-house classy cabin, and the GS350 is a compelling alternative to established top-enders, but for some it still lacks ultimate cachet. 